Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. My plan for this video is to help you improve as quickly as possible this year and as much as possible this year. And the way that I'm gonna do that is to lay out a five-step plan to help you improve probably the number one thing that you need to improve in your game at the moment. Now, obviously, I haven't seen you play, but I do get to see a lot of players play. And I've got a coaching program where I work with a variety of different levels of player from all around the world. And I can say for sure, that the number one thing that lets players down is their quality of footwork. When players send me videos for analysis, they're normally kind of talking about specific aspects that they've got going on with their technique that maybe they've seen on a YouTube video or they've heard from a different coach. And 99% of the time, the problem was that they weren't set up in the right position for the shot. Maybe they were too close, maybe they were far, too far away, or they weren't taking a ball at an appropriate height, but it just about always comes down to footwork. And that's the underlying cause of their other problems. And then when they send you match play footage and they kind of want to know about what's going on tactically and how they should implement things, the number one feedback is that players' footwork sucks even worse when they're playing matches. So they're just not set up in the right position for their shots. Because of that, they make way too many unforced errors, donate their opponent's points. So the underlying fix is to improve the quality of their footwork. So that is why I wanna focus on it within this video and kind of give you a plan and way that you can start to work on things. Because just telling someone to work on their footwork doesn't solve the problem, you have to know how as well. So that's what we're gonna be going through. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's much appreciated if you could do that as well. The first step in the plan is to practice your footwork without the ball first. Footwork patterns are very unusual, it's very different to how we normally move around the world in everyday life. So you need to learn how to do the movements first. You can do it out on court if you've got access to a court, or if you don't have access to a court, you can do it literally anywhere. So there's no excuse not to work on your footwork. Now, when you're practicing your footwork patterns, you're gonna be breaking things down. So you're gonna spend time focusing on your split step. You're gonna spend time focusing on your pivot step. You're gonna spend time focusing on different movement patterns moving out towards the ball because if you're trying to hit a wide forehand, the way that you move to the ball is gonna be different to if you're hitting a ball that's a little bit closer to you, to you, or if it's a short ball or it's a deep ball that you need to move back for. But you need to have spent time practicing these different footwork patterns without the ball first. And you need to achieve a significant number of repetitions so that you feel comfortable with all of the movement patterns before you're gonna realistically be able to transition things to be able to do it when the ball's there. So step one in the plan is practice your footwork without the ball first. Now, instead of me going through all the individual footwork steps here, I've created a free program to help you with that side of things and show you how to practice this without the ball. So I'll place a link to the program up in the corner and I'll place a link down in the description so that you can start working through that. Now that you've started to practice your footwork without the ball, the next step in the five-step plan is gonna to be to address any physical limitations that are preventing you from using good quality footwork through a full length of a match. So the first one is gonna be strength and conditioning. It requires a tremendous amount of conditioning to actually use good footwork on a continual basis because you're constantly on the balls of your feet, you're constantly moving, and that requires both strong legs so all the leg muscles, but especially your calf muscles needs to be strong. Otherwise it's an injury risk constantly doing split stepping. You need to have a level of fitness to be able to maintain it. Potentially you might need to work on your flexibility. It's one of the big things I have to work on, improving my hip flexibility and my adductor flexibility so I can stay lower to the ground and have a wider, more stable base. That might be potentially something you need to work on as well. And then the other thing you might need to work on is your coordination. A lot of players lack sufficient lower body coordination in order to be able to use the different footwork patterns. So when they start to work on the footwork, they're very clumsy and they can't make the specific patterns happen. So potentially you might need to improve your coordination as well. Now, if you'd like help with this side of things, this is the big area that I work with tennis players in. I've got a full coaching program 
where I do work on technique and things, but I mainly focus on teaching players how to use brain-based training to improve their coordination, their visual processing, so you can read where the ball's going, which is also a huge component of being able to use good footwork, but all that stuff I help players with, so if you'd like to learn more about that, I've got a class that will teach you all about it. I'll place a link up there, and again, down in the description, so you can get hold of that. But step two, it's absolutely crucial. Your body has to be capable of using good footwork through a full length of a match. Step three is gonna to be to work on isolated footwork patterns with the ball. So you're not gonna go straight from practicing without the ball to playing in matches. There is a 0% chance that you'll be able to do it effectively. You have to kind of progress and transition your way through. So you do a lot of repetitions without the ball. Then you work on specific patterns with the ball. So here I'm working on my left-handed wide forehand. So I'm naturally a right-handed player. I'm relearning to play left-handed. So I'm trying to get better at my open stance forehands. So that's what I'm working on. It consists of a good quality split step where I try and stay nice and low, a drop step where I drop my left foot underneath my hip to try and drive me out to the wide ball. There's then a crossover step. And as I'm making contact with the ball, I use a specific footwork pattern, a mogul step. So it's a case of doing this out on court over and over again, doing enough repetitions until these movements become habits. That's what it's really about. Without the ball training and then the isolated footwork patterns, we're trying to habituate these movements so that now we own them and our brain can just start to naturally draw on them and use them at the appropriate time when we're practicing and playing matches. Step four in the plan is to really focus on improving your footwork during your regular practice sessions. So when you're drilling and hitting with different partners, you have to prioritize the footwork that you've already been working on without the ball and in the isolated patterns. The hard thing about tennis is there's so many different things that we can think about, but footwork, getting to the ball, setting up in the right position always comes first. So you absolutely have to prioritize it and focus on it during your training sessions. And that's what I'm doing in this video here. We've just seen that I was practicing that open stance forehand. Now that I'm rallying with a partner, I'm getting to hit that shot occasionally, but not that often, which is why it's so important to do the isolated practice to get enough repetitions. But this is phase four. Get very comfortable, get very focused with your practice partners. And that brings us on to step five in the plan, which is to focus on your footwork in point play and in match play. And it really does require focus. You're not gonna be able to wake up tomorrow and go, yes, I want good footwork and just be able to do it on court. It doesn't work that way. You're gonna to have to really focus on what your opponent's doing, watching them shaping up to hit their shot so that you can time your split step to land just after they've made contact. And then hopefully you can quickly read where the ball's going so you can use your appropriate footwork to set up in the right position. If the ball's dropping short, you're gonna to have to move forwards. If the ball's going deep and it's heavy, potentially you're gonna to have to move back. You need to be the right distance from the ball. So when the ball's up high, you're probably gonna to need to be a little bit further away. When the ball's down low, you can afford to be a little bit closer, but you have to be thinking about all this stuff and it takes a lot of bandwidth in order to be able to do it. And you have to go through the thought process over and over again until the actual thought process is habituated. But by the time you've got to that point, Point, you are going to be a completely different level of player but you've really got to go through these five steps you have to practice without the ball first footwork patterns are weird you won't magically be able to do it you need to do repetitions until you feel comfortable with the movements you have to be fit enough you have to be strong enough to be able to do it safely throughout a three set match because if you do it for the first set and then you're exhausted you're going to lose anyway, so you've got to work on that side of things. You then practice the patterns in isolation because maybe you need to be better at hitting or putting away short forehands. We well, might only see a short forehand three or four times in a match, so it's not enough. You need to have done repetitions in isolation, grooving the particular footwork pattern. Then you work on it with your practice partners. Again, we're just kind of gradually making it more difficult until you get to the point where you're doing point play 
and match play. But if you do that, I promise you it will change your tennis this year. Like I said a couple of times in this video, there's so many different things that we could focus on and we might need to improve about our game, but you've got to think through things in a logical order. Tennis is a movement-based sport. You've got to get to the ball before you can hit it. The better position you're in, the likelihood is that you'll hit a better quality of shot. So you need to allocate your practice time and your mental bandwidth towards working on the most important stuff first. Once you've got those foundations in place, everything else can kind of come afterwards. So hopefully the video has been helpful to you. As a reminder, there's the free footwork program, the links in a couple of different places. If you've got any questions about the footwork uh, from the program or that I've, anything that I've talked about today, leave me a comment down below. I would appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. It really helps me in the algorithm. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's much appreciated if you could do that too. And I will catch you next time.